Welcome to the Sales Wolves Podcast. I am Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. That was a little better than last week. A lot better than last week. We practiced for <laughs> days on that. My voice is hoarse from having. <laughs> so welcome. This is episode four of the Sales Wolf Podcast. I can't believe it's four already. I know. Isn't that funny? I know. It it's is. amazing what it's you do when you just do fun. it. When you just do it yeah. and do it. What's our topic today? We may even talk about that today. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so last week, if you remember, we talked about the man in the mirror. Uh, we hope you got a lot out of it. We've gotten a lot of response back, a lot of positive feedback uh, on Facebook um, regarding that. So make sure that you are going to our Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash podcast. But let's start back with, you know, why are we doing this? So there's twofold, uh, twofold task. The first is just to show appreciation. And, and support and training uh, for the most, probably underappreciated, but the most important uh, person out there, which is the salesperson. Yep. And, and, and we're of the firm belief that there's, there's not a role that exists in, in the working world or outside the working world where you don't need sales skills, people skills, persuasion skills. Um, you know, I had, I had somebody go, I'm, I'm a Policeman, I don't, I don't need sales skills, but hmm. you, you need better sales skills than anyone on this earth, probably, mm -hmm. right? In dealing with the type of people that you deal with, good and bad. Um, so, I mean, we, we're, we're of the firm belief that everybody's a salesperson. Yeah, absolutely. It's funny, as we've been going through this process of creating this podcast, I've started listening to other podcasts that have kind of a sales uh, skew to it, and, and I've found that a lot of them sound like infomercials. Uh, because at the very end, they're like, and if you want to hear more about prospecting, go to Tyler Harris's prospecting ebook.com yeah. and for 12 easy payments of $19.99, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. So, so what we want to do, you, the mentor. Yeah. <laughs> so what we want to do is, is, is take what we've learned from all those types of things and put it out there for free. Yeah. And hopefully people will get value. I've bought some of those. Have you bought some of those? A bunch of them. I think yeah. I bought them all. Mm-hmm. And studied them all. There's good stuff in them. Yeah. Look, we're not we're not hammering people that do that. Yeah, we are. But a little bit, yeah, a little bit. If they don't have the fruit on the tree, but yeah. uh, but we want to just we want to give it to you for free. We want to because we want to see people succeed. It's the thing that drives me. It's what wakes me up at keeps me up at night. Wakes me up in the morning is seeing people go from where they are to where they want to go. Absolutely. Somewhere better. Absolutely. So I want to start off today's podcast uh, with a quote. And the quote's from Calvin Coolidge, and he said, Nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than the unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. God, that's persistence awesome. and determination alone are omnipotent. Omnipotent. And for people like me who had to look that word up so they knew what it meant, mm -hmm. that means that persistence and determination alone are omni, which is all, and potent, which is powerful. Hmm. I'm all explain that. powerful. I was wondering if you knew what it meant. I was actually surprised my, you, my you brain, pronounced it correctly. My, my brain instantly went back to, I don't know why Will Ferrell keeps coming up in these podcasts, but on uh, Talladega Nights, <laughs> oh. they're saying that prayer. And they're like little six pounds, seven ounce, baby Jesus. Baby Jesus. <laughs> what does he say? He's like all sw swaddled up in your manger, all uh, all knowing yet so omnipotent. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I was Dude, thinking of. That's but. hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so the title of today's podcast is Keep Showing Up. Keep Showing Up. Yep. Absolutely. I wanted to throw out some just some statistics real quick because yeah, I let's, found let's, these. Let's research. tell people real yeah, quick yeah. before you do it because Absolutely. I've got I pulled up the thing. Keep showing up is all about perseverance, determination, perseverance. Perseverance is steadfastness in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. Right? <clears throat> success is elusive, mm. and there's almost always difficulty. There's almost always delay. But the person who achieves it is the person who keeps showing up, right? Mm -hmm. They keep showing up. It's perseverance, steadfastness in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. That's the first thing that pops up when you Google it. So mm -hmm. anyway, go over the statistics because this is interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And when I found these statistics, it, 
it, it honestly, it blew my mind. So and again, these are some sales statistics. So 48% of salespeople never follow up with a prospect, never, ever, 48%. 25% of salespeople make a second contact and stop. 12% of salespeople only make three contacts and stop. Only 10% of salespeople make more than three contacts. But this is what's really interesting. 2% of sales are made on the first contact. <laughs> so you have 48% of people never making the, even the first contact. 25% yep. that make the second, but only 2% are made on the first contact. 3% on the, on the second contact. 5% of sales are made on the third contact. 10% on the fourth contact. But 80% of the sales are made between somewhere in between five, fifth and twelfth contact. You know what's funny is I talk about that manager that I had when I when I was selling payroll and mm -hmm. and what's funny is he had an exercise until I saw this I forgot about it. But he had an exercise one day where he had a hundred dollar bill and whoever asked him correctly is how he how he put it mm -hmm. to get it to get it from him. And so everybody was going and literally the only thing he was looking for was who asked him five times or more. <laughs> Isn't that funny? That is funny. And boom, they got the money. And it wasn't me, because I didn't realize. I, I was forming these elaborate questions. I was, I was thinking, well, it's all in how the approach is. No, it's just that you uh, approach, right. Yeah. right? So anyway, that's... Yeah, there, was a, there was a quote I heard one time too. It said that success ultimately is just hanging on when all others have let go. Yeah, yeah. And so if you think about it, it's, it's literally just a matter of being there. It's yeah. just being present. Showing up. Showing up. Showing up. That's why so, the podcast is called that. So we've all heard the 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 quote or probably saw it on a t shirt or on a on a bumper sticker. Eighty percent of success in life is showing, showing up. up. Um, and the reason for that is it's it's hard to catch opportunities if you're not there. Yeah. Uh, and I think that you know something interesting, um, this isn't even on our on our notes for today, but something interesting that I've been thinking about this morning is that in a world where it's never been easier to connect without showing up, yeah, it's it's only increasing the importance or the the magnitude of of what showing up actually means, like physically Fact. showing up. God, that's a uh, great which is, point. Which is interesting because right now I could I could hop on my computer and I could connect with people all over the world. Yep. But when you show up to the conference or you show up to the meeting in person, yep. it makes it that much more uh, impactful. God, I was laughing about this the other day, man. I was talking to a businessman who's been in business over 30 years. And in the 80s, people used to walk through the door of his office to sell him something nonstop. In the 90s, it was less. Mm -hmm. The 2000s, it was non-existent. Isn't that funny? I'm telling you, the people, whoever, whoever's in a sales situation today... It could be it could be some brand new kid with some widget coming out of college. If he beats on doors all day long and goes walks through the door of places, I promise he'll crush it. He'll crush his competition. He'll dominate. Like like Cardone says. Actually, I think you pulled this the sales statistics from Cardone. Mm -hmm. By the way, he's awesome. Mm -hmm. He's a great guy. If you're not listening to some of the minds of today, like the Fursellos, the Andy Fursella, and the Gary Vaynerchuk, mm -hmm. and the Grant Cardones, they all have so much stuff that we've pulled from them. Oh, yeah. I've, I've learned from from all of those. But but you can also go back and learn from from the greats, uh, Napoleon Hill, and, mm -hmm. and all of these. And and for people like Tyler, who who aren't a fan of reading, he's an auditory learner, right? Mm -hmm. He's auditory. I'm both. I, I I read and listen. It helps me. But um. But you can get all that stuff on 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 audiobook now. Listen, I mean, you can listen to it in your sleep. Mm -hmm. But uh, but as we're talking about um, perseverance, I was reminded of a story that I was told. And I'm 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 not a super religious person. I'm really not. Um, I like studying history, so I've studied some of you know I've studied Jewish history. Obviously, I grew up in the South. That's that's pretty much what you have to do um, <laughs> if you grow up in the South. Um, but uh, because I mean the, the churches here, they're like bars elsewhere. They're on every corner. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah, saying? Absolutely. So, absolutely. And and I'm not throwing stones about any of that. But one of the stories I was reminded of this with Tyler is is the story of the widow. I think it was in Luke. Um, Luke 18, something like mm -hmm. that. One through eight. And yeah, and um, and it, it, it's funny. It, it it's an it's this principle is as old as time itself, right? So there's literally a judge, right? Somebody that that is a judge, and and it says that he neither he neither love 
love God. He didn't fear God, nor did he care about men or women, right? Mm -hmm. So nor did he care about people. So let me tell you, the hardest sell on this earth is somebody who has no moral compass, mm -hmm. okay? Which is what it was saying there. He has zero moral compass. There's no ethics involved here, right? There's no, there's no I'm not gonna listen to you and it's the right thing to do, and I'm gonna do it. That's, this guy did not care about that. And then it says he didn't care about people. Which I've met people that, that weren't that ethical, but they really loved people, Sure. right? But this guy had zero ethics and didn't care about people at all. Is that the hardest sell you're ever gonna make? That sounds it's, like a great guy. <laughs> it sounds, it sounds, like, it sounds like some people I know. <laughs> but uh, but so, so it's the hardest sell ever. And, and, and there was a widow, right? And, and they were typically the poorest, mm -hmm. okay? In, in that day and age because of the patriarchal society. So she was a widow. So she didn't have anybody that was gonna take care of her and get justice for her, right? So she was, she was at the end of, she was down on her luck, right? But she needed justice against an adversary. So typically, the, in that society, the male, if she was married, the male would have taken care of everything, right? He would have gone to get justice for her. She was a widow. And so she had to go to the judge to get justice. And, and it literally says that she went over and over and over and over. And I would venture to say that it wasn't five, it wasn't 10, I bet you it was 20, 30 times because literally the judge says, he says, she is wearing me <laughs> out. She says, I will not make it if I have to see this woman one more time. And guess what she got? Justice. Justice, justice, she got justice because of one simple reason. Sure. I bet you she wasn't eloquent. I bet you she didn't have the best sales pitch. I bet you she didn't, she probably didn't have the best product. And her, and justice to her may have not been justice to someone else. But she got justice for her because she showed up, and right? He, and, I, and I think it even said that, that the judge said that he it was in fear of that the next time she may come, she may, he may be attacked. So she's probably right. getting more and more aggressive every single time. Every time. Going from a ring the doorbell to a boom, 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 boom. And you know what's funny about that? It reminds me, same manager, same payroll company I work for. Guess what he said? He got aggressive on a, on a sale one time, and I was like, my God, that was uncomfortable. <laughs> and you know what he said to me? He said, well, sometimes you have to step on their neck and make them bleed. And I went, this is perp. That's exactly what we're talking mm -hmm. about. Push. Absolutely. Just just doing that motion of knocking on knocking on a door just reminded me of, of my story when I first got started mm -hmm. uh, as a financial advisor knocking on doors. <laughs> and, and I'm talking about knocking on so many doors that I never told you this. I used to uh, carry a golf ball in my pocket and I would when I went up to the door, I'd go tap, 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 tap because my knuckles would be so sore from knocking on doors <laughs> all day long. I love it. Uh, I can remember when I first got started, it was the middle of the summer and I'm in a full suit knocking on doors. And when I mean knocking on doors, I mean parking in a residential neighborhood, getting out and then getting back in three hours later and going to another residential neighborhood. The knot on my tie would be soaking wet. I'd always have to bring a change of shirt and at lunch I would change shirts. And uh, <laughs> so, so literally when, awesome. it, when, when it comes to what we're talking about today and keeping on uh, showing up, I would go out and I would knock on people's door and I would just introduce myself. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm Tyler Harris, financial advisor, right down the road from you. Just out here doing a little good old-fashioned advertising. So, so, so wait a minute. You weren't you weren't selling lawn care or Nothing. something at their house. You were, and 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 very very prominent company in America, mm -hmm. um, financial advisor. Mm -hmm. And you ran the office. Yep. And you knocked on doors like that. Yep. And just said I'm doing a little good old-fashioned advertising, and, and we just spark up a conversation. Um, and, and it was so funny. And it's funny that you say that. Like. I can remember specifically this, uh, like a some type of young professionals organization or some organization that I went to one time, a big meeting, and they were kind of all talking about what we do, and and I mentioned that I knock on doors, and this financial advisor with some other company, he looked at me and literally looked down to me, and he said, "Knock on doors," like interesting, and just walked off, uh, but. Knocking on doors. I can remember one time. That guy will die, bro. Yeah, That's right. a fact. I can remember one time specifically that I knocked on a person's door. A man came to the door, started a conversation, happened to just mention in passing as I was leaving because he mentioned that he had some, some CDs that were coming due. Um, certificates of deposit, not compact disc. 
<laughs> but he had some CDs going you know what to <laughs> And as I'm, as I'm walking out, I said, hey, just so you know, we've, we've got a really good municipal bond that just came in inventory and just in passing as I left. He called me, I think three hours later, this was on a Friday, I remember, because he called me and he said, hey, do you still have any of that uh, municipal bond left? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. I said, what do you want to start with? He said, I'll do 100000 so that was on a Friday. That Monday, I think he bought like 75,000 more. The following week, another 100,000. And then he ended up rolling in like $1.2 million of his portfolio to me. Boom. From knocking on his door. Boom. And, and the funny thing is, so what I used to do is I would go knock on these people's doors. Mm -hmm. And then I would make it to where like every two or three weeks, I would show back up on their door. Yeah. And what would happen is after about the third, fourth, fifth time, they would give me uh, their financial statements, their, their investment statements to do a review. And, that, and that's what my goal is. I knew that if I could get the statements to review it. Well, that shows a lot of trust, absolutely, right? Because you've, you've built some trust. Absolutely. So I would get back to my office. And then once I had that statement, this is so funny, what I would do is I would look through it and just look for any investment that they had, like just a, a stock, for example. Yeah. And I would look up the stock online and I would just find any news, any news, like didn't even really have to be significant, just anything sure, about sure. one of the just, investments just that they had. Just something they had. And I would call them up and I'd say, hey, Mr. Smith, I'm sure your financial advisor has already called you about this today, but I wanted to make sure that you knew that Pepsi stock that you have, this happened and this happened. And I just wanted to make sure, again, I know your advisor probably already called you. I just wanted to make sure you knew about it. Hope you have a good rest of your day. And then about a week later, I would do this on a weekly basis. I had it in my calendar on a week, week later. Hey, Mr. Smith, Tyler Harris, uh, I, I'm sh I know your, your advisor's probably already called you, um, but about that Procter & Gamble stock you have. So they just did this, and I think it'll do this. And, but again, I'm sure, they've, I'm sure they've told you. About the, usually the third or fourth time, sometimes the fifth, but used to by about the third or fourth time, when I call, I can almost feel them, them saying, okay, I have not heard from my financial advisor once in the last four times that I've talked to this guy. This guy is advising me on my finances and he's not even my financial advisor. And every single time they would end up rolling over their entire portfolio to me because I was calling them just showing up. Yeah. I wasn't showing up with anything significant. Yeah. I was just showing up and making them feel like somebody was watching. Uh, what they had. And you don't even have like a, a face that someone would just altruistically trust. Or a voice. <laughs> <laughs> or a voice over the phone. <laughs> no but I mean, it was so, I mean, it was, it was, it was yeah. incredible to see how literally, and when I started as a financial advisor, I started in 2007. So right when the market just dumped. <laughs> Which every single one of the financial advisors I worked with, they're like, "Oh, how are we gonna, how are we, how gonna, we gonna survive? Make it? How are we gonna do this?" But it was the absolute best time to start out as a financial advisor because every other advisor was hiding under their desk, not calling their clients, yeah. scared to call their clients because of what was going on. Yeah. And I'm picking up the phone saying, "Hey, I'm sure he's already called you," knowing that he hasn't. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, I just wanted to, to share that story because it, it was one hundred. It was one hundred percent just showing up, and it was how that. I built that career there. I had a quote. Many of life's failures, this is by Thomas Edison, by the way, who's probably one of the biggest failures that I've ever read about, mm -hmm. bar none. Him, Abe Lincoln, Babe, I mean, Ruth. Babe Ruth. I'm talking, <laughs> these are the biggest failures, yeah. flops that have ever existed, mm -hmm. right? And, and many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. Isn't it funny? Babe mm -hmm. Ruth probably holds the strikeout record to this day. I think it does, yeah. <laughs> but but would anybody deny that he's one of the greatest? No. No. Never. Everybody needs to look at their life like a baseball game. If you don't know anything about baseball, learn about it. Right? You, how how can you hit the Hall of Fame by striking out seven out of ten times? Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. By failing, by doing the walk of shame from the plate back to the dugout with zero results seven out of ten times. Seventy percent of the time your absolute failure. And see, most people look at that person and 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 they go, oh, that's a failure or whatever. Or they look at themselves and think they're a failure and they stop doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They give up too soon. Mm -hmm. um, when he may have gotten the three home runs or the three base hits in eight, nine, and tenth at bat. Mm -hmm. You just never know how it's going to work. And what, what showing up boils down to is hard work. Because what in our business we talk about it all the time. When I first got started in, in our business, 
you know, my close ratio was 30, 40 percent. And Con we had con conversion. So conversion you probably, ratio. your close ratio was probably 10, 15 percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So our conversion, uh, yeah. probably about 30, 40 percent. Uh, and we had other coordinators with us that were, you know, 80, 90 percent. And my mentality was like, that's fine. I'm just going to see three times more people. I just have to see a lot more I'm just going to show up three times more. Yep. And it doesn't matter. You can, the sales skills and the techniques and overcoming objections, every aspect that we're going to be teaching on this show, on this podcast, that can all be developed. learned and developed yeah. and taught. But the hard work ethic is what gets somebody to show up. Period. And that that we can't give you. No. You either, you can't you either, you either no. have it or you don't. No, we can't give that to anybody. Absolutely. I didn't give that to you. No. You know, when you started with us, there was yeah. no way. We didn't, we, it was just, and in fact, I, I, I was rather shocked at just how <laughs> poor the results were, but everybody else was like, man, he's incredible. Like he's hitting these unbelievable results. And I kept looking at the ratios going. You were looking at the strikeouts and they were looking at the home runs. <laughs> I was like, yeah, but he's not. I mean, he's leaving a lot of money on the table. I told, I told you that yeah, several oh, times. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I didn't. But but it was unbelievable the results you were getting because you just kept showing up more than anyone else. So so it's 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 interesting. So to kind of summarize and close. So no matter how you feel, show up, yeah. dress up, and never give up. And never give that's, up. That's that's the key. And so. Again, going back to that quote that we've all heard, 80% of success in life is just showing up. Well, if that is true, then the other 20% is in the follow-up. Ah. And that's what we will go over next week uh, on episode five, episode uh, five. the Sales Wolf podcast. Um, if you are enjoying these podcasts, if you are getting anything out of these podcasts, which obviously we hope you are, yeah. uh, the only thing that we would love uh, to ask of you is share it on social media, share it on Facebook. We're, we've, we've got the podcast now on iTunes, uh, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and then we're posting the uh, videos up uh, on Facebook and on YouTube. If you could uh, share those for us or maybe tag somebody in the comments uh, that needs to hear it, uh, that would mean yeah. the world to us. It means the world to us. We want this information to get out there. That's, man, we are not, we're, we're not selling anything, right? We're not, there's no system that we want to give them we're, and we'll never give, you know, sell some system or do whatever. We yeah. just want people to, 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 to get better, right? To get better. We want to give the information away for free. So Absolutely. share it. And uh, man, we appreciate you guys. And, uh, and with that, we are the original Sales Wolves. Oh! See you next time.